Good morning, Packers fans. Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat. Coming to you live across the street from Lambeau Field for day eight. Practice over there at Ray Nitschke Field. The pads come back on. They were inside yesterday with a walkthrough. Not a lot to talk about, but today, hopefully, we will get a much better look at the start of the 2022 Packers. Good to see everybody in the comments. Thanks so much for checking us out on all the Cheesehead TV social channels, including my blogger Facebook page, because that's right. The She Said TV Facebook page has still not come back. It's kind of crazy to me that that thing got hacked, like, legitimately, what, right after the draft? Still can't get it back from Facebook? Y'all are crazy. Anyway, you know who's not crazy? That's right, the folks over at Ticket King. Ticket King has been in Wisconsin since 1992, and they're staffed with experienced, friendly, and knowledgeable folks that can help you with anything Packers ticket related. They also partner with local Green Bay businesses for tailgates and bus transportation to the games. They are open on game day for last minute tickets, upgrades, and they even have a drive through window. But if you can't drive up to Ticket King, you can always use the Cheesehead TV app. Go to the schedule, you'll find individualized links for each and every game, bringing you to Ticket King. Get it, people. You know you want to. You want to see the Packers in person. Do it with Ticket King. The other thing you need to do is get your official 2022 yearbook of the Green Bay Packers. Head to PackersYearbook.com. Use promo code CHTV for 10% off. That's promo code CHTV for 10% off at PackersYearbook.com. That's what you want to do. That's what you need to do. The other thing you need to do is chill. Talk some Packers. It's what we do. We're devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Chatting with you Monday through Friday right here on Packers Daily. Hello to everybody in the comment section. So many regulars already mixing it up. Gary, good morning. Brandy, how are you? No, it is not family night yet. We got one more night to go, but it's almost here. Definitely almost here. Dennis is here. Hello, Dennis. Hope you're having a good day, buddy. Callum, hope things are good across the pond. I made it to a live show. Yay, Janelle. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging out, talking some Packers. I was the farmer's market last night. Big B, it was lovely. Sat outside, had a beverage or a couple or three or two. Talked with uh, young Corey Banky and Rachel and some other friends of ours, La Labazetas. Uh, ran into a couple Patreon members. That's right. Rick and Ann, hope you're doing well. We're heading up north. Going to have a good time up there. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was The vibe is immaculate, although I will say. It was kind of funny. I was walking into where they have the farmer's market and there was a act, a, music, a band playing and they were they were doing a rendition of Radiohead's Creep. I don't know. I just, if I'm in a band, and I am, but if yeah, I'm playing an event like that, I don't know if Creep is what I go with at any point in the set list. That's just me. I just, I get it, man. You'd show your musicianship. Bully. Go. Godspeed. I love you. But Maybe something upbeat on a lovely summer's evening. People are out having a good time. Just something to consider. That's all. Alan, thanks for the super chat. Andy Herman showed clips of love and says his throwing motion has gotten quicker. Seems to be learning from 12. What do you think? I get asked about love's motion, throwing motion a lot. And I will say, I don't think it's been compacted. I think he's done a pretty good job of maybe not quickening the release. I don't think he's ever going to be a quick release guy. but it's clear that throwing from the ground up, as Roger said at his locker uh, yesterday, using the footwork the way um, traditionally you're supposed to at quarterback, transferring your weight from back to front, doing the, the footwork correctly, has greatly improved uh, the zip that he can get on the ball. And, you know, I don't think he's, like I said, he's never going to be Aaron Rodgers. No one is, as far as, especially as like the flip of the wrist thing that Rodgers does, right? I don't know if that's ever going to be Jordan Love, and that's no surprise, but it certainly seems like he's got a much better command of the ball, and I think Aaron was alluding to that yesterday. Um, you know, I think the footwork and the balance, more than anything else, has really helped him. And the, the next step, obviously, is to do this with a live rush, because right now he's wearing a red jersey. It's very easy to, quote, stand in the pocket and deliver the football when you know you can't be touched. Now, you're still playing it as though, okay, I need to escape. Like if there's a, you know, an alleyway, you try and get out and make a play on the perimeter as the quarterback in the practice situation. But just the very nature of standing back there and delivering the football, it's a bit easier when you know you can't be touched. They can't breathe on you. You know, the whole place will freak out if you touch the quarterback. So the next step, obviously, is to show 
and to bring that over, that work over that they've been doing every day at Nishki Field and bring it into a game setting. And hopefully we start to see that against San Francisco in the first preseason game. Uh, Michael, thank you for the super chat. Is it just me or does offensive lineman Cole Schneider look like he could go to Halloween as Sergeant Slaughter? It's an apt comparison. He's got a big boot on his uh, foot at the moment, unfortunately. He went down a couple days ago. Jordan has an awesome quarterback coach this year. Uh, ain't easy being cheesy. You you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's not to diminish anything that Luke Getze did, uh, but Tom Clements, I mean, he's one of the goats, no doubt about it. And Aaron Rodgers could not stop singing his praises enough at his locker yesterday. Um, just the absolute drill down into the fundamentals, the way Tom works. And that's kind of why I asked Aaron the question that I did, because, you know, Aaron has talked in the past a lot about how much, you know, Tom meant to his development, what he means to him personally, but especially as a quarterback and learning the game and learning the position. So I kind of wanted to know, like, is is it different? Like, is there kind of an acquiesce to the idea that Rodgers is a four-time MVP and he won these last two MVPs without Tom on staff? But, you know, according to Aaron, it's the exact same stuff, drilling down on the fundamentals. Every drill is meant to bring something else, bring something new, kind of remind the quarterback of, making sure that those fundamentals are the foundation of what you're doing. And what's funny is that I already had, I got some blowback on Twitter about it because people were like, well, Aaron, you know, there's so many plays where he isn't fundamentally sound. And it's like, this is where it's, you know, kind of, I guess probably a little weird, but in acting, we talked about this all the time, Corey and I at school, like our act, we're, actors will work, you know, you hear the cliche all the time about what's my motivation, right? Well, if you're breaking down a script and you're looking at your character and you're doing the work, you try to find the spine of the character and you try to find what that character, kind of the characteristics and what it's built around in the rehearsal process. So that when you are actually in a scene with someone, you know what the rules are and then you break them knowingly, but you're still supported by all that work. Quarterback is the same thing. And that's why Aaron is so fucking good at what he does, because he knows all the rules. He knows the fundamentals and he's excellent at them, but he also knows when he can break them. You know, and he didn't arrive in the NFL playing like that. That has been a journey, an 18 year journey that is still ongoing. So I just I found it fascinating and I just loved and I said it on Twitter and I'll say it here. If you have not watched Aaron's availability at his locker from yesterday, I highly recommend you do so. There is a ton of of great football talk. He, he got into a lot of stuff, whether it was Devondre Campbell, whether it was um, just the quarterback position in general, the offense. He talked a lot of offensive football. It was good stuff. Highly recommended. What else we got, folks? How we doing? Big B is here. What's up, Big B? How you doing? Should Hard Knocks transition from covering teams to the men and women who really grind during camp, the local media beat? Oh, nobody wants that. I mean, I know media members have become part of the narrative, right, throughout kind of Hard Knocks history, but nobody, we're not the story. I just remember, everything we do, like, this is something I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I'm glad you brought this up, because and not just, like, talking about from the media end, but just in general, like, this building. All the people employed in that building, everything that goes around that building, everything that happens with this franchise, everything in, that the organization touches is driven by the players. The players are the game. Don't ever get it twisted. Don't ever forget. The players are the stars. They are what matter. Coaches are important. Personnel people are important. The business side is important. But the players make the game. They are the reason we watch. No two ways about it. Nothing is more important. Don't ever forget it. Uh, Jacob, thanks for the super chat. <laughs> I appreciate it. I do. I can't even pronounce that word, but the fund is greatly appreciated. I know that's from the Rogers podcast talking about all the stuff he was doing this offseason and has been doing. And look, I have no interest in listening to any of that. Like, look, great. I know people are devouring it and it's awesome. But uh, you guys know, and I have said it so many times, I feel like I'm a broken record, but I don't care. Like, I, I just don't care about his off the field endeavors, uh, off field life. And that's the same for Rogers or most of the players, you know, it's, I I really I care greatly about 
you know, how he plays the game and what he thinks about football. And I absolutely, of course, believe that uh, he wants to represent himself as carrying the G, right? And being the face of the organization and representing the Packers wherever he goes, you know? And I think he does a really good job of that. But as far as like his personal trials and tribulations and things of that nature, he chooses to put them out there. That's great. I'm just, it's just not my bag, man. I got a million other things I'm interested in that I'm going to spend my time on. That's just me. But I listen to him talk football all fucking day because that is like God tier stuff. Phil, thanks for the super chat. Regarding that new Rogers podcast interview, he did. Hmm. Do you imagine that some of his teammates give him grief about it or no? It was certainly different. I think some of them will listen to it. I think some of them won't. I think there will be rookies who probably listen to it who would never dare say a word. I think his friends like David, uh, Randall, et cetera, will probably give him untold amounts of shit. I think it'll be different for every person in the building dependent on the relationship with him. But yeah, I can't imagine for a second that Dave hasn't given him crap about it, like in any way, shape or form. Philip, thanks for the super chat. Which rookie do you think will have the biggest impact this season? Ah, that's a good question. I mean, your automatic assumption is Quay Walker, right? Um, and I think that probably will hold true. I don't know, man. I want I want to try and be clever and say somebody else. Danny Davis. No, I'm kidding. Probably Quay Walker. Um, I, I know, like, you want to say Romeo Dobbs, but I just can't believe that a rookie is going to come in in an Aaron Rodgers-led offense and be the star. I think he'll be a great complimentary piece. And I do think there'll be flashes. I think it'll be similar to what we saw from Devante his rookie year, where, you know, there are games where he's not involved, but there are games where he does get involved and he catches big touchdown passes and we're all really excited. But I think about the biggest impact overall, especially on one side of the ball, I think it's going to be Quay Walker. That would be my guess sitting here in early August. Michael, thank you for the super chat, bud. Since Uncultured Barbarian is not present, Big Daddy Cool Breeze has his back. Today's jam is... Work that ass for daddy by Mark. <laughs> what a what a jam. I appreciate it, bud. Thank you. What about Razul, Charles Woods, and Douglas? Clayton, how about that drop from Rogers, huh? That's some high praise. And Rogers said with deepest respect. I mean, when you're being compared to Charles Woodson, and it's hard not to, right? When you look the production he had last year, the way he broke on the ball. And Rogers, the one telling thing in that comment for me was when he talked about Razul baiting him in practice. That's something Charles used to do all the time, try to get quarterbacks to, you know, like kind of play off or play an angle where it looked like he couldn't get to the ball and then kind of bait the quarterback over there and either break on it or pick it. Um, I love that. I love that he's trying to like bait Rogers into something. That's high praise, man. That is high fucking praise from 12. No doubt about it. Are there any news on the injured players? Nothing, Randy. Um, you know, Matt gets asked almost every day, and he says, you know, there's no timeline. When they're cleared, they're cleared, and then away we go. Um, I know they added a couple guys yesterday. I think Rico Gafford was was added to the injury list, but he was out there doing walkthrough, so it can't be that significant. Um, but, yeah, no, there were no updates. Maybe we'll get something from Matt when we talk to him in about a half hour. How is Romeo doing in training camp? Very very well, Callum. He's making a big play almost every single day. He had one of the most ridiculous touchdown catches I've seen on Nitschke Field two two days ago, I want to say, in the corner of the end zone. Holy cow. Kid is looking legit. Uh, is Bakhtiari still a question mark? Trayson, yeah, you can't call it anything else until we actually see him practice. I mean, I know their, their hope, I, I, I'm guessing and I'm kind of surmising here, is that he is ready for week one, but Man, that feels like a long way away for Bakhtiari. I don't know. We'll see. Cautiously optimistic. That's the party line. I'm sticking to it. Um, my projected O-line starters for week one. Chris, it's so hard because we don't, like, Bakhtiari's situation messes everything up. Like, I don't think Elton will be ready, and I don't think that's a surprise. That's pretty much would be on schedule for when he got injured. But if Bakhtiari's ready to go, then it's Bakhtiari. Um, it's Runyon. It's Myers. Your, your left side is set. And then the right side gets interesting. Probably Yash at right tackle if Dave is going. Um, and then Newman at guard, most likely. Now, David isn't ready to go? Whoo, baby. Because then I think it's probably Yash at left tackle, although I think Zach Tom could get a look. And then Tom probably plays the other tackle. 
uh, at right if he isn't at left. Obviously, Myers and Runyon. And then probably Newman, unless they slide Newman out to tackle, which they could. And then they've been running Jake Hansen at guard, which scares the hell out of me. But they know more than I do. So we'll see. And I do think, and Soda brought this up in the Patreon happy hour yesterday, which I think is a good point. Like, I think the Hanson thing is very much because he most likely is locked in as the set, the backup center. Um, as Rogers has indicated, that is the surest way to make sure you're on the team is to be the backup center. Um, and so they're just seeing what he, what else they can, he can give them, you know? So hopefully it doesn't come to that. Uh, when you see 69 jogging is awkward looking like last year. No, he looks right as rain to me, but I've got layman's eyes. Would you say Big Bob Tunyon is the best bet of those rehab players to play week one? Tulio, I think, you know, best bet, who knows, but he does look good. I can't believe they haven't put him off the PUP yet. He's running. I haven't seen him really do much, like, serious cutting yet, but I got to expect that's the last thing you you will see with some of the rehab guys. Man, he looks good, though. He's running at a full tilt. Doesn't have any kind of noticeable kind of change in his gait or anything, so... Hopefully, sooner rather than later. Always important to remember that no one wants them to win as much as they do. Very true, Kristen. Very, very true. Uh, Hill looked great. Yeah, it really sucks that he got hurt because he had such a promising summer last year. Really wish uh, we could have got a full year out of him and then seen him kind of hit this camp into year two. Would have been really exciting. Talk about a triple threat there in the backfield. Should we bring back the McCray twins? Oh, I love them, but doubtful. Uh, ship has sailed. Brandy Lewis loves Ty Summers. Logan, why are you out here? Why are you out here trying to start beef? Why don't you don't? Last person you want after you is Brandy. Trust me on this one. You don't want. You do. You do not want that smoke, as the kids say. Nags, what's on today's practice schedule? Good question, Kerry. Uh, practice is at well. We talked to Matt Lafleur at nine fifty local. Then practice is at ten thirty. Um, Probably about a two-hour practice. Uh, I know Coach had indicated he's going to push it a little bit today. They'll be they'll be back in pads, and got to expect we'll see move the ball, probably some red zone work, um, and then we'll have locker room. And then I'll be back here doing extra cheese, talk to you fine folks about everything I saw. Um, so with that, I think I'll leave it there. Um, got to get across the street and talk to Matt. But thank you guys so much for hanging out and talking Packers each and every day. Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please do me a monster favor and hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends and tell your family. Cheesehead TV, we are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go. Uh, uh, uh.